Good afternoon, everybody. I am Harshana Bula Singhala, team lead of public lectures, seminars, and workshop committee in Civil Engineering Section Committee IESL. So, today my job is to welcome Professor Oswamu Kusakabe and Dr. Kinichi Horikoshi on behalf of Civil Engineering Section Committee IESL and to tell you little bit about themselves before they talk about the given topic. First, I would like to introduce Professor, first speaker, Professor Osamu Sakabe. He graduated from Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology in 1973 and obtained Master of Engineering from Tokyo Institution Institute of Technology in 1975, Master of Philosophy from University of Cambridge 1980, Doctor of Philosophy from University of Cambridge in 1982. So, he has an academic experience as an Associate Professor at Uni Utsunomiya University 1984-1991, then the Fellow of Churchill College, Cambridge University, 1990, Professor at Hiroshima University, 1991-1996, Professor at Tokyo Institute of Technology, 1996-2011, Distinguished Visiting Professor at National University of Singapore, 1998, Visiting Scholar, Delft University of Technology, 2004, and also President National Institute of Technology, Ibarak College 1911 to 1916, Professor Emirates of Tokyo Institute of Technology 2011, Professor Emirates of National Institute of Technology, Ibarak College 1916. He has a professional experience as a Vice President of Japan Society of Civil Engineers, President of Japanese Geotechnical Engineering, Board Member of Inter International Society for Soil Mechanics and Geotechnical Engineering, Secretary of Technical Committee on Underground Construction of Soft Ground, Secretary of Technical Committee on Scientific Modeling, Funding Editor in Chief of International Journal of Physical Modeling in Geotechnics, Member of International Review Board of Land and Transport Authority, Singapore Government. <coughs> Currently, he has a work. President of Inter International Press in Association, Chairman of Asian Civil Engineering Coordinating Council, especially appointed professor at University of Tsukuba, especially appointed professor at Nagoka University of Technology. So, so I would like to welcome Professor Osamu Kusakabe to the, to the present give the presentation. So let's give a welcome to Professor Sama Sakam. Thank you very much for kind introduction. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm very pleased to be able to give a talk this very prestigious institutions, institution of engineers in Sri Lanka. Actually, I was the um, quite frequent visitor to this country um, 25 years ago, actually. I had a, a research collaboration <coughs> with a professor at um, Peradeniya University on the residual soils. Um, maybe twice a year I can come over here. Uh, after 20 or 25 years later, I arrived this country as if there's a very completely different country. There were very much rapid development over the 20 years, and I was, I'd like to congratulate your people and government to such a wonderful development in this beautiful country. Um, I'm, uh, let me just, currently I'm the chair of the ASEP. ASEP is the um, it, we call the Asian Civil Engineering Coordinating Council, which is an umbrella organization of the Civil Engineering Society, Institute of Engineers, all these covering in this 
um, Asian regions, consisting of 13 societies and institutions. So I would like to warmly um, invite your institution to be a member of ASEC. My next speaker, our next speaker, will explain to us about the details of ASEC later. Today I would like to I'll talk about the national disasters, how to see and how to mitigate. This is my topic. I try to cover the four issues. One is the just overview of natural disaster in this country as well as in Japan. The similarity and then um, locality. And then how to see the natural disaster from point of view of the decision makers and the business people not from the engineering point of view. Then I'll, a few, I'd like to say a few words on the recent uh, Japanese experiences, what we have learned from the natural disasters over 20 years ago. <coughs> and then finally, I'll touch on the development of the Gross National Safety Index, we, which we are developing um, to cover all these um, issues. Now first, this is the um, diagram showing us who are affected by natural disaster in worldwide. Um, the data is coming from the 175 to 2000, over 25 years. As you see, the Asia, 88%. All the people affected by natural disaster living in Asia. So that the Asia is very prone to national disasters. <coughs> The civil engineers and the engineer has to work <coughs> towards the mitigation of the natural disaster. And then what type of natural disaster that affecting the people? In here, the flood, 60%. And then drought, nearly 30%. And then earthquake, just only 1%, very small. But if you look at the next slides, this is a loss, economic loss. The earthquake is the largest. So that's the earthquake giving us a huge economic loss. And then I'm sure that you have experiences of the tsunami in uh, 2004, I believe. And the flood is 30%, and then drought is only 2%. So that we have to look at the both the number of the people who are affected and both in terms of economic loss. Now I'm going to the characteristic of natural disaster in Sri Lanka. As far as I know, from my, ex my uh, uh, the last experiences and a few more information through the network. So what type of natural disaster affect your country is a flood. Almost half is a flood and then drought. So the two extremes the, may be caused by the climate, climate change. So that's the tsunami is here. The landslide, a very small amount. But if you look at the, some of the information quite recently, just the last year's Guardian. This is a picture of showing the flood and landslide in Sri Lanka, killing at least 150 people. And also, the Daily Mirror in London also reported nightmares with natural disaster in Sri Lanka. So another landslide view in Sri Lanka here. So, so you, you can see that the water-related failure, water-related disaster is a key in your country. And there's another view of the landslide or Davis Law the destroying some of the, the houses in here, killing many people. The Daily Miller had the, had the some view of the, uh, the expert on the natural disaster in this country, showing the list of causes of flood and landslide, largely due to the climate change and then deforestation and the illegal construction and then blah, blah, blah. So which tells us the natural disaster causes, main causes, is a combination 
of the environment change and the human activities. Not necessarily only the natural uh, phenomena. The human activities is the, fa uh, co uh, the one of the major causes for natural disasters. The Sri Lanka Disaster Knowledge Network showing us the, which area is vulnerable to the, all these nat uh, the natural uh, disasters. That the flood, flooding in somewhere here, in Colombo, in somewhere here, in this part, western side, and then the uh, eastern side. Landslide is somewhere here, it's a mountainous area, and then towards the south. This is the, uh, as a sort of hazard map. <coughs> due to the um, natural disasters. So I know that this is the statistic, a uh, case record of the landslide locations in here, uh, concentrate on this particular regions, very much similar to this um, district hazard map. This is the, the total number who killed by earthquake in this region. You see that Japan, many people were killed by the earthquake. And then Taiwan, and the Philippines, and then Indonesia. But Sri Lanka is here. No people directly killed by earthquake. So that you are very safe against not the um, earthquake itself. But you do have the um, some effect. This is the view of a tsunami 2004 I mentioned earlier. So in the summary, as far as I know, that the major causes of the natural disaster in your country is mainly water related and then we sometimes associate with the landslide. And then you have a very rare earthquake. Sri Lanka is far away from the plate boundaries, yet it is close enough to the high active seismic zone, which may lead to a, a tsunami hazard. We have experiences 10 years ago. It's very much in contrast in Japan. Japan is sitting on the four plates, margin point. So one is a Pacific plate uh, pushing towards the, the um, um, west. And then Ori o o Eurasian plate is coming here. So the compressing strength is coming in here. So we have another plate coming from the Philippines here and the North American plate. So it's uh, um, the very, um, uh, the earthquake from um, country, Japan. Actually, that, that, the rate is very much similar to the rate of your no nail growth. It's a very slow move, but sometimes huge energy release causing the, the earthquake. This is the data how many people are killed or how many people are missing um, due to the natural hazard. The, after the uh, Second World War until 1960, we have the more than 4,000 people are often killed by mainly typhoon. And then the government put a huge money onto this, <coughs> saving that, that life, and then reducing here, so more or less the 100 people, very small number now. But occasionally, if you have an earthquake, in the Kobe earthquake, we, kill, we have uh, more than 6,000 people killed. In the recent earthquake, 2010, 22,000 people were killed. So this is a characteristic of the Japanese uh, natural disaster victims. This is a view of the tsunami of um, 2011. And then more recently, we have the water-related causes the creating the disaster to human beings. This is the, the um, debris flow due to the heavy rainfall in here, the killing, the uh, destroying all the houses in here, the killing more than 100 people. This is very much similar. This is a Japanese experience and your experience. So the people are living in here, and then this landslide or debris flow destroying the, all the houses, killing the people. The very you have a similarity. 
And then also that the Sri Lanka is shown that this uh, deep seated uh, the failure, mountainous failure. And also we do have the similar event, failure in the mountainous area and here and here. So you can see that the similarity. So the characteristic of the natural disaster in Japan may be summarized, long-term gradual decrease in the death total, missing total, since a strong typhoon in 1959. So a very long period of time, we improved that, that, that kind of thing. And the record in recent years, at uh, less than 100 people killed. Occasional peak at the time of large earthquake, <coughs> and then we are facing the, the water related dust as well. I remember when I visited the, this country 25 years ago. There is a, some picture, the landslide, and then causing the failure of the railway in the mountainous area. Maybe someone that may remember the, this event. We have a similar event. Uh, this is the recent uh, landslide causing the, by the heavy rainfall. Uh, this is a major traffic uh, road, and this is the abutment, and then this is the failure. So then this ab abutment becomes very vulnerable, again, further uh, the damage. Then um, we have uh, the uh, reinforcement exercise in here, uh, the reinforcing of this abutment here. This is a plan view of this is an abutment, this is a road, and then we place a series of the steel pipe piles under here to support this abutment to failure. So if you look at the, this section, this is a, the side view of cross section. This is the abutment. This is the series of these steel sheet piles. This is the failure surface due to the, earth, the rainfall. Then we fill the, the, this gap by soil. This is the how we reinforce. This is our recent experience. This is a view of the sheet pile, uh, the um, steel, steel pipe piles. This is a special equipment um, we call the gyro piler to pressing all these piles, the rotating with, with also the pressing. And then this particular machine can move, walk themselves on the top of the pile. So we don't need any temporary structures to support them. Well, this is a view of that one. So, so any other machine can do it. So that's a, this particular machine is very useful to reinforcing this kind of the failure. Now, I'll give you the, some experiences, uh, lesson learned from natural disaster. 1994, January 17th, there was a huge earthquake in the California. <coughs> Northridge earthquake, the failure of the highway. Many Japanese bridge engineers visited this site and then have an interview here, and then they, they said, never happened in Japan, because the Japanese bridge has been designed by, well, you know, seismic design has been done. But exactly one year later, we had a failure. And this is the highway collapsed totally, killing 500 people, 5,000 people. So the exactly one year later, more or less the same damage we have. Then what we have learned from here, the people and society and the engineers has become aware of the first three there exists no absolute safety for buildings and infrastructures. But on the same side, this is practically impossible to allocate unlimited budget. The money is limited. So that we must construct the, uh, the, another, the buildings, uh, the infrastructure another way. So this is the two things we have learned from the big, huge aspect in, occurred in Kobe. Then what we have done, that the adoption of the concept of the performance-based design, which consists of the selection of the combination between the design external forces 
and the structure for book. So that in over 10 years, Japanese design code has changed to the performance-based design code. All structure, buildings, and railways, and roads, and power um, uh, facilities. So for example, this is a very famous performance matrix in the vertical axis. This is the earthquake. This is a very frequent earthquake return period about 50 years. It's quite, quite um, likely to have to occur. This is a very rare return period of 1,000. So the level of the, the earthquake is changing from here to here. This size, the performance of the <coughs> structure. This is a full operational, operational and a near collapse, depending on the importance of the structure. For example, we, ha we have the nuclear power station. Nuclear power station has to be, remain fully operational even under the huge earthquake return period of 500 and then even the 1,000 still operational. Otherwise, uh, it's a huge disaster. But if you have the conventional road structures, you can't do this because it's too much money required. So that the ordinary structures may be along this line. So that the frequent aspect, OK, is the fully operational. And then the return period, 500, but still there is a no human loss. So, so selecting all these the forces and the operation and the depending on the importance of the structure we select. This is the performance-based design concept. And then the 2011, we had an earthquake. The, the area of the slip is, source region is 500, uh, 2000, 500 kilometer, 200 kilometer, very much similar to the your country size. The huge strip causing the, the huge earthquake in here. So there are many lessons we have learned. I have listed one of the a couple of things in here. Significance of subduction zone earthquake, which is very large and then prolonged motions. Three minutes is moving around. Three minutes. In Kobe, only 15 seconds. And then the important point is the difference in the structure safety of public and then private asset. The bridges and railways, there's a very small damage on here. But the ordinary houses, private houses, collapsed significantly. So there's a big difference in the safety structure in the public and the private asset. And also we need to develop, develop the technology against a huge <coughs> tsunami disaster. This is the typical example of a liquefaction damage. So it's a very newly made house destroyed. And similarly, the, all these houses is collapsed due to the landslide during the earthquake. And the tsunami is also very terrible things. This is the a river embankment, more than one kilometer long, all the embankments swept away. Recently, we have uh, many uh, failures of the river embankment. One example is the 200 meter, uh, the river em em embankment fell due to the heavy rain. And then the, this is a, the portion the, of collapse. There's uh, many houses in here that people are rescued by helicopter. This is the thing that is happening quite recently. So in the summary, in Japanese experiences, the lesson learned from earthquake progressively improved the safety of infrastructures, but still we need for the safety against, uh, safety for the residential environment and the need for the preparedness for the climate change, water related disaster. Now we move on to the next issue on the how to see the natural disaster <coughs> from the view of decision makers and the business people. Um, this, the, this is the Global Risk Report 2015, uh, 17. 
you can download from the website. Uh, this is the published by the World Economic Forum. So that's the view of the decision makers and the business people. How to see the, the risk of the natural disaster from their point of view. So this is the um, risk trend interconnection map they, they in, indicated. That all these things are interrelated. Not the natural event. For example, the degradation environment, climate change, rising urbanization, growing middle class, and an aging population. All these are interrelated. It's again, once again, the natural disaster together with the social changes. That is the causing the failure and the natural disaster to our society. More cross viewing here. Uh, this is the aging population, middle class in emerging economies, and um, what's that? Uh, rising uh, chronic diseases, rising urbanization. Yeah. Extremely weather event is one of the, the causes for all these um, networks. And they also publish the DAT report every year. So quite recently, they have the risk in here in, the, in terms global risk in terms of livelihood the extreme weather event is the most um, uh, uh, important event from the point of your business and decision <coughs> and a natural disasters in here. In terms of impact also extreme weather trend events and natural disasters. So that the, not only this, uh, the engineers, also the business people, decision maker people think the weather event and the natural disaster is a very important risk and we are facing at the moment. So now finally I'll touch on the um, natural, uh, the gross um, national safety index. Um, I was the president of the Ge uh, Japanese Geotech Society when we had a big earthquake 2011. Then I thought there is something missing, which is the, this one. So I, I coined this idea of the GNS, the Gross National Safety for Natural Disasters. We wanted to have the index of nationwide safety index together with the Gross National um, Gross Domestic Product and the Gross National Happiness in order to have the steady transform a country to a resilient society. And then also more importantly, perhaps the, the work with decision makers. Civil engineer alone cannot do everything. With starting point, the, uh, the Shogo framework for action, the building the resi resilience of the nations and the communities to disasters. So that the um, Shogo framework clearly indicated the main activities are two things. Creation of the index of natural disaster risk and the index of vulnerability of society. And the both from the view of the natural and then social sciences. This is the Hyogo framework as the, uh, uh, the pointed out. If you look at the, this book published by the UN um, United Nations University, there are a <coughs> series of index showing our vulnerability here. So uh, the most famous one the World Risk Index, which is the combination of the natural the phenomena and the social phenomena. This, uh, we, they call it the exposure in terms of the people who are affected and then frequency of the occurrence of the, the hazard and then this is the sustainable susceptibility and then coping capacity capability, adaptability, all these forming the vulnerability index, they multiply to force giving the World Risk Index. This is the World Risk Report 2016. The red is very bad information. Japan is very bad, very, very vulnerable. And Sri Lanka is slightly better. But all these regions are very vulnerable to the natural disaster. So we, we develop this concept more further 
to for the policy makers and decision makers as a tool for communication between engineers and the policy makers. Now, this case uh, is some mention of the hazard and exposure and the vulnerability. We cover the earthquake, tsunami, stor uh, storm surge, uh, the landslide, and volcano. And then vulnerability is the social economic vulnerability against natural disasters. We have two classifications of hardware countermeasures and soft countermeasures. And then we use the big data available for us. They expose the related the hazard and the population. And 12 databases we use it. And then all these vulnerability related, we have 22 databases. I have a report on here, and then give you this for more detail. This is the result of the risk index in Japan. Tokyo is very bad, and here this region is particularly very bad, and the Hokkaido is much better. And then we, we develop this technique into the very uh, small um, scales like this, so that each small society can have the GNS, GNS index based on these calculations. And how to use these data? This is the case of Tokyo. This is the hazard, the hardware measured. The dotted line indicates the, the nation average. So that way it's very bad. Road intensity in Tokyo is very bad. So we need to improve this one in order to have a better um, index. And the software, the very bad area is the number of bed people if, if they have a, um, affected. And then the hazard map. And the another way is the change of the GNS with time. So this is the sum of the country. This is the vulnerability of hard software and the vulnerability. This particular four uh, prefecture is moving in this way, which means it's getting better, but mostly improvement of the software, software measure. But it, this particular uh, prefecture has they make a great effort to improve the hardware <coughs> vulnerability. So because of the, this and how that the risk is defined this relation, which means this is the high public functions, which tells us that if you plot vulnerability and then population structure exposures, the line is something here, and if you have a better situation, getting it safer in here. The two policies is possible. One is the putting the money to improve the vulnerability, this one. The other uh, the strategy you may take is the change in the population structures. So the, the location of the people need to be the safer locations to replace. So I have covered four aspects um, in this uh, presentation. The key messages I wanted to convey to you is the civil engineers play a key role in improving the vulnerability against natural disasters. Everybody knows that. But we must be aware of the civil engineer alone can do very limited contributions, since the risk of natural disaster are closely interrelated with social trends. The civil engineers must work closely with decision makers. And then proper safety index, like a GNS, must be developed for com communication too with decision makers as a stable improvement of safety of our land. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, I would like to introduce today's second speaker, Dr. Kenichi Horikashi. He has his specialty in geotechnical engineering, Foundation Engineering and Earthquake Engineering. He obtained master degree from Kyoto University, Japan in 1987 and PhD University of Western Australia in 1996. So he's a 
जनरल मैनेजर टेक्नोलॉजी प्लानिंग डिपार्टमेंट टेक्नोलॉजी सेंटर थाइश कॉपरेशन सेक्रेटरी जनरल एशिया सिविल इंजीनियरिंग कोऑर्डिनेटिंग काउंसिल मेंबर ऑफ टी सी टी वन टू डी फाउंडेशन इंटरनेशनल सोसाइटी फॉर सॉइल मैकेनिक्स एंड जियोलॉजिकल इंजीनियरिंग बोर्ड मेंबर ऑफ द जापानीज जियोजिकल सोसाइटी को मेंबर ऑफ इंटरनेशनल एक्टिविटीज सेंटर जापान सोसाइटी ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियर्स सो आई वुड लाइक टू वेलकम डॉक्टर Kinichi Horikash to the stage. Let's give a warm well, welcome to Dr. Kinichi. Thank you for a kind introduction. So the topics of my presentation: the recent technology development trend, trend in the Japanese construction industry. I, the reason I decided to, this topic is very few information. Uh, about Japanese construction industry is uh, reported to overseas. Mainly, uh, this information is only in Japanese. So I'd like to uh, let you uh, introduce their situation and also a uh, recent trend in the uh, technology development in Japan. My name is Kenichi Horikoshi. Uh, actually, I'm uh, Secretary General of ASEC. ASEC stands for Asian Civil Engineering Coordinate Council. And also, uh, I'm General manager of uh, Taisei Technology Center. Um, Taisei is uh, one of their uh, big construction company, one, one, one of five big construction companies in Japan. And first of all, I, ha I have to introduce ASEC because I came here to let uh, IESL uh, introduce, uh, welcome to ASEC. So ASEC stands for the Asian Civil Engineering Council, Coordinated Council. Actually, this was established on nearly 20 years ago. Now we have 13 members, um, United States, Taiwan, Australia, Indonesia, uh, India, uh, Bangladesh, Pakistan, uh, Japan, Korea, Mongolia, Nepal, Philippines, and Vietnam. So we, all the ASEC members are waiting for you uh, to join uh, to our members. And uh, one of the very important activity in ASEC is the uh, technical committee. Uh, since the establishment of ASEC, we have now uh, 23 technical committees. And some of them are still uh, in operational status. And as you, you understand from the Professor Sakabe's presentation, uh, TC21, uh, that, that this uh, deal with some disaster-related technical issues. I think uh, disaster, uh, the to topics of the disaster is always our common topics we should discuss together uh, to solve our number of issues depending on the economic situations. There are also uh, actually, I was a secretary of TC8. The code, uh, harmonization of design code, are also always very important issue for us. How we can develop uh, co collaboratively our own design code, which satisfy uh, your own natural condition or also uh, worldwide situations. Actually, these, these are photographs of our activities. Uh, uh, Technical committee always have seminar like this. Also, uh, we have a meeting with local engineers. The most, one of the very important aspect of ASEC is uh, all the engineers from government and uh, industry, also university, get together uh, to solve our common issue related to Asian infrastructures for our people's happiness. And uh, the other very important uh, ASEC activity is SICA. SICA means Civil Engineering Conference in the Asian region. We have, uh, every, every three years, we have SICA. And the first SICA was uh, held in 1998 in Philippines. 
uh, the pre President Ramos, who is the, who was the civil engineer, attended this conference. Then there we have the Sika in Tokyo, Seoul, Taipei, Sydney, Jakarta, Hawaii. Then uh, next year in April, we have the eighth Sika in Tokyo. Uh, so we are also uh, we would like to invite you to this very large civil engineering conference in the Asia. More than I think more than 1,000 participants uh, get together from all over the world. So for the detailed information, you can refer to the website. Um, let's move on the topics to my company, Taisei Corporation. Uh, actually, as you, I have mentioned, Taisei is uh, one of the big construction companies in Japan. Uh, it was founded near more than 140 years ago. Uh, we have uh, more than 8,000 employees, and we have overseas office in 12 countries. Of course, we have the uh, office in Sri Lanka. And Taisei is actually broadcasting TV commercial, uh, which deal with expressway project in Sri Lanka. After Taisei constructed uh, some of the expressway, uh, expressway in this country, I hope this movie work well, I'm not sure. Moving this. <laughs> Takes time. Okay. So just okay. So time is limited. So this, this is uh, broadcast in all over Japan. So Japanese people know about the uh, expressway in Sri Lanka. And this commercial uh, attracts very many young people. And also, uh, uh, this, uh, this is the content of my presentation for now. Uh, the first one is the latest data on Japanese construction industry. Uh, maybe you, you, do, you do not know. And the second one is ongoing mega project in Japan. And the third pro topic is some of R&D activities in the research institute, my research institute. I'm not sure uh, most Japanese construction companies have their own research institute. This is very different aspect of Japanese construction industry. And uh, this is the institute of major five Japanese construction companies uh, each research institute has, has more than 150 to 200 researchers. Uh, they are doing a lot of research projects related to construction. And the budget for uh, research and development is about 7 to 10 uh, billion N, which is equivalent to 60 to 90 billion US dollars each year. So we are investing a lot of money to, for the development of construction technology. And this technology can be applied to uh, any construction site, site all over the world. So I'd like to introduce some of the uh, results of the r &D activities. So now I'd like to introduce latest data, latest data on Japanese construction industries. This figure shows uh, investment in construction in Japan, and uh, so left side are. Uh, uh, access uh, GDP, uh, gross domestic product, and the right hand side, access in investment in cons con construction. So when you see these figures, uh, gross domestic product has remained almost unchanged for uh, the past 20 years. This is very different from your country. 
at around about uh, 500 trillion, all constant. But, um, but investment in construction had halved by 2010 from the peak, peak, peak of Japanese 84 trillion yen in 1992. That means, that means uh, investment in construction halved, but it's a big problem for us. But when you see these figures, last these five years, uh, the investment increased by about 20% Uh, in these five years. This is because of the <coughs> just, uh, recovery work from the 2011 big earthquake. Also, we are preparing for uh, 2012-20, uh, 2020, uh, Tokyo Olympic Games. And also, you see a slight increase in this here, uh, increase in investment in construction. This is because of the uh, recovery work from the uh, Hansing Great Earthquake. And when I see, you see the number of construction companies and employees in Japan, this is a very uh, unique figures. And left side axis shows the number of construction company, and the right hand axis shows number of employees in Japan. When you see these figures, actually, uh, the number of construction company has decreased by 22% from the peak of 600,000 uh, in 1999, you know, you understand. There are so many uh, construction companies in Japan, but most of them are very small. And uh, then the number of employees in construction industry has fallen by about 25% from the uh, 1997 peak of uh, 6.85 million. So this decrease is very big problem for uh, the construction industry. Despite uh, this increase in construction, uh, increase in investment in construction. So despite recent increase in construction investment, both number of our companies and employees have not increased. And this figure shows another uh, aspect of uh, construction industry, Japanese construction industry. This is the, uh, shows the uh, proportion of uh, employees uh, against total numbers. And the red figure shows the <coughs> proportion of employee. Uh, this one is with a year more than 55 years old. And this one is proportion of employees uh, for, is, with age less than 29 years old. And, and blue figure shows the average of all the industry in Japan. And this figure shows rapid aging in the, uh, oh. rapid aging in the construction industry is much more significant compared with the other industry in Japan. And at present, more than one third of employees in Japanese construction industry exceeded 50 years, five years old. And with only about 10% being less than 29 years old. So aging is another big problem for uh, Japanese construction industries. Then I'd like to introduce some of the major big projects in Japan. Uh, The uh, construction project for uh, 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games facilities and the new maglev line between Tokyo, Nagoya, and Osaka, and Tokyo Ring Highway uh, to solve traffic problem in Tokyo. And also, we have other very important projects in, in Japan. Uh, the first one is, as you know, uh, recovery from 2011. Great aspect. Also, uh, the contamination and internal storage facility for uh, Fukushima uh, nuclear power plant. 
And also, uh, we have to uh, tackle this renewal of high rise building in con consideration of long period planned motion due to a uh, uh, big aspect. The first one uh, is this is a new national stadium for 2012 uh, Tokyo Olympic and Paralympic Games. Now, this is still under construction. Actually, uh, Taisei Corporation is constructing this uh, stadium. And construction work just started on December uh, 2016. Just means just only uh, one year uh, has passed since the start, start of the construction. The starting time delayed more than one year due to the change in basic design by the decision of, decision of the Prime Minister uh, Shinzo Abe. And, uh, but the construction will be, uh, construction must be completed in November 2009, uh, 2019. Uh, if, we if we have enough time, I can show you some of the movies related to these constructions. And uh, another big project is new maglev line between Tokyo, Nagoya, and Osaka. Uh, this is the photograph of the uh, maglev. The maximum speed is uh, 500, nearly 500 kilometers per hour. This will reduce the travel time by half compared with the current village train Shinkansen in Japan. And the op operation will start in 2027 for Tokyo Nagoya section. The distance is uh, 290 kilometers. And this will provide redundancy uh, for the transportation of very important, highly dense zone in case of disasters. Current rear train uh, operate, operation here uh, along the coastal line, but this new Maglev line will go to the mountainous area. This will uh, need another uh, technology. This is the map of the uh, new Maglev line between Tokyo or Shinagawa to Nagoya Station. As you can see the, in the, this map, uh, this line is on the very high mountain side. Then if we see the clock section of this uh, line, this is uh, uh, altitude. And this red line shows the Maglev line. This means among the 290 kilometers of distance, uh, the tunnel structure is more than 250 kilometers. That means 86% of the line, is, line structure is tunnel structures. So that we have to make very long distance tunnel. And one of the big and very difficult tunnel is this uh, South Alps Tunnel. We have to construct a tunnel under the uh, mountain with a high, high altitude, high, height of nearly 3,000 meters. And if we enlarge this area, uh, this is the line, uh, Maglev line, and this is the mountain shape. So the, the height of mountain is about 6,600 6, meters. And the urban burden depth of the mountain is about 1,400 meters. This is the actually a kind of an experienced zone, so we have to tackle with this difficulty in construction to open the uh, new Maghreb line in 2027. The third one is Tokyo Ring Road Highway. This is a highway. I, I know, I, not, I, not, I understand. In Sri Lanka, you are also constructing a uh, ring road around uh, Colombo City. But we are still uh, in Tokyo uh, constructing a ring road. And uh, area road from central metropolitan area are almost completed. That uh, means here, almost complete. But ring roads are still under construction, which are necessary to prevent road congestion in central Tokyo area. And this is the typical cross-section of the Tokyo Outer Ring Road uh, plan and cross-sections. So 
It's because Tokyo is now highly urbanized, and a lot of buildings are constructed. We have to construct a high expressway very deep under the ground, nearly uh, 40 meter depth. This is a cross section of the uh, spring road. So construction in deep underground, avoiding near surface structure is necessary. And uh, <coughs> we need deep underground, large diameter shield tunnel technology to expand tunnel in deep underground for junction. Uh, there, there, these are tunnel, but we need junction to the uh, ground surface structures. That means we need some kind of this uh, structure we need. We have to construct. So this is the summary of the up to now. The investment in construction nearly halved from the peak value of in 1990s. But however, recent, recently, the industry is getting busier due to a number of mega projects in Japan and recovery work from the 2011 Tohoku earthquake and also preparation for future possible earthquakes. And despite such busy situations, number of employees in the industry has not increased. And aging rate is much faster than that in other industries. And to cope with these situations, enhancing the productivity in construction industry is quite important in Japan. And uh, considering uh, the above situations, Japanese cons government start started a campaign with uh, eye construction. And I don't, I don't introduce some of the technology to enhance productivity, productivity in construction industry. In especially uh, just now uh, operate, going in my research institute. The first one is uh, development of armed construction systems. Actually, this, 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 this system has started after the Mount Unzen volcanic, volcanic eruption in uh, 1991. For recovery work at dangerous area, armed construction system was necessary, and the government decided to start to use. Also, after the uh, Great Earthquake 2011, Fukushima nuclear, nuclear power plant, uh, unmanned machine removed rubble and debris immediately after the accident to allow rapid and problem-free com commencement of the other recovery work. For this kind of uh, unmanned construction system, we need this kind of uh, control room. The operator need to move the machine by watching a lot of TV, TVs. This is not easy. Uh, kind of, we need some skill to operate this kind of unmanned machine. After that, uh, we have decided to develop a kind of autonomous unmanned vibration roller machine used for uh, earthquake. Uh, this is just uh, initial stage of the uh, machine. After entering required compaction conditions, the machine can automatically complete the work autonom uh, autonom autonomously keeping track of the number of compactions. And uh, so there are a lot of sensors on the machines so, uh, to detect the position and the situation and also uh, surrounding conditions. And the construction work can continue even in poor visibility, such as with foggy condition at, at night, at night, because there's no person operating. So the machine can itself uh, start constructions. And the operation data can be linked with the data from information modeling, such as uh, BIM and SIM. We say BIM is building information modeling, and SIM is construction information modeling. Uh, this is the, so I think we should move. Uh, this machine is no, there's no person on the machine. The machine can work by itself if we initially input the data. Then they count, the machine count the number of comp compaction. Then they finish automatically. So even this kind of foggy conditions, the machine can uh, 
uh, continue uh, the operations. This is another autonomous unmanned breaker. That's, you see, there is no person on the machine, but uh, this machine can break the stone by finding the stone and then the, by finding the uh, best position to break the stone. Well, there are so many dangerous areas in Japan. Uh, this kind of machine is very useful for a kind of recovery work or, or as any construction project in the world. Uh, this is another uh, system, uh, AI controlled safety system for construction machine. Uh, so that we applied a artificial uh, intelligence to detect a human around the uh, construction machine. Oh, that's, this movie doesn't work, sorry. <laughs> um, by using our AI technology, the machine can detect a surrounding person, only person, detect a person, and then they avoid their uh, people for the safety. This is another uh, machine for uh, concrete slab finishes. As you know, Concrete finishing, finishing work is very hard. Look at that hard work in difficult posture, and they have to work even at night after, after finishing concrete casting. Then we decided to start to develop a kind of uh, machine for him. And uh, this is the machine we have developed. Uh, this machine can be operated by using uh, some remote controller like game. Uh, this is uh, uh, how it works. Uh, so by a single worker with a controller, such as used for computer games, and this is a battery operated and weight 90 kilograms, of which 25 kilograms is battery weight, and continuous operation for 3.5 hours if possible. But battery performance and weight still leaves room for improvement. Another one is uh, automatic reinforcement bar binding, bonding. I hope I can this movie work well. Because uh, of the some uh, computer problem, this machine, the movement of machine is not smooth, but actually it is very smooth. And the machine can find where the machine should bind the reinforcement. Then they bind by himself. And then they move gradually to, by detecting the uh, binding position. But not smooth. Sorry, the movie doesn't work. After finishing this line, the machine will move next line by finding the best position by himself. So this kind of machine is now under development. This is the automatic cleaning machine for construction site. Uh, this machine recognizes safety cones like this and barriers making off-limit areas. So this machine can only clean uh, limit, only limited areas. Uh, this is another one, uh, automatic ready machine for a rect rectangular steel column. Uh, these people are observing the, some experiment. You know, there is some kind of temporary uh, structure here, but the machine will avoid these structures by himself. And this machine was actually used for constructing a new studio now under construction. 
The last one is the uh, advanced position system for pipe installation. For uh, detecting the uh, pipe position, there are generally we need two persons uh, here and here, but by using the uh, new system, only one person can uh, decide the pipe positions. By we, uh, the person will wear smart glasses, and uh, on the smart glasses, the person can see the uh, uh, precise positions. This is how it works. This is the, uh, how he can see on the glasses. So when he moves this one, uh, this will move together. And the person can see the position on the uh, glasses. And then can, he can find the uh, exact position for piling, piling. And this will be very now getting very popular in Japanese construction site. So that's uh, the some of the introduction of the, the, some recent development, development in the, our research institute. Actually, these development uh, cannot be made only by civil engineers. We need some collaborative, collaborative work with uh, electronic engineer, also mechanical engineer, and also some of the uh, AI engineer. We all together. Uh, now we need we need a lot of knowledge to construct, uh, develop these machines. So uh, the latest situation in Japanese construction industry is briefly introduced. And despite busy situations, number of employees in the industry has not increased, and aging rate is much faster than that in the other industries. And to cope with this situation, enhancing productivity in construction industry is the important issue. And new technology have been developed and which employ the recent ICT and AI technologies. I think this technology can be uh, applied even in Sri Lanka in the, in the future uh, to enhance the productivity because we are now very busy uh, for uh, developing uh, infrastructures. And thank you for your attention. <coughs> Because we have still a bit time, uh, I can show you some the movie showing the introducing the new studium for Olympic Games. It takes about six minutes. That's why. <laughs> okay. Because uh, you can see the movie on the website here. Uh, I'll uh, let the uh, issue know the website so you can see the movie here. Okay. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Now, sorry for the inconvenience because we have like a, we tried our best to uh, bring the technical person to solve this issue, but unfortunately it was not happened. Now, time for the uh, question and answering. I think if you have any question, you can raise. I invite both the speakers to the stage. Thank you very much for the, for the presentations conducted.
my question is uh, with regard to the early warning systems used in uh, Japan <coughs> to make the public aware of whatever the impending uh, disaster. So in Sri Lanka, there are three agencies which use the information to the National Disaster Management Center. Namely, meteorological department which gives the information about weather, the irrigation department which gives the information about flooding, and the National Basic Research Organization in India which gives the information about land. So, in Japan, how do you have integrated these agencies which use various information with regard to impending uh, disasters, and how do you disseminate? such information to the public with the use of other service providers who are operating in the country in a time limit. Yes, it's a, it's a very important and a very difficult part to disseminate information to the public. One way we are using it, the, the um, smartphone or mobile phone, so if you have the big earthquake, it can detect, and then automatically you can form, your phone start ringing. Then earthquakes, and this is the one way. The other way is to use it just in, um, using the radio or other information. Uh, the I, ICT is, is the key to trans, uh, the disseminate information quite quickly to individuals. It's a very important part. And in particular for the um, highway, um, the high speed train, it can detect the, the, the P wave first. And then until there is S wave kind of thing, they automatically get the radio stop. This system is being implemented. So that's that kind of thing. So it's a very important point. The other point is awareness and then the, uh, the people. Um, may I use that, that my PowerPoint? Uh, this is one of the, my key concerns, actually. The last part. Um, I haven't shown you the basic rule for mitigating natural disaster. One of which is, as you have pointed out correctly, improve the people's literacy for science. Um, you may be surprised to hear that only the 20% people in the high school, uh, they, they learn physics, only 30%, 40%. And the geo science, only 4%. So the awareness and the literacy for the science is very poor now um, because of the education system. So that's the, I think it's the, one of the key issues. We must improve people's awareness and the preparedness for that. Um, together with the uh, swift information um, translate to the Thank you. Uh, here's another question. Uh, with regard to flooding on one side and drought on the other side. So in Japan, do you make use of a system when there is flooding to divert that flooding water into areas where there are impending droughts? So that uh, you make use of this, whatever the the water, additional water flowing onto the sea or whatever the downstream so that you convert or divert them into some other area so you collect them and preserve them so that you can be using them in the future. Yes, I, I, think, I don't think we, we have the, the diverse in that way. But the one way we are, are trying to improve the situation is underground tunnel. The, the soil, all these water, excess water, and then after the rain, rain will stop they start gradually. So that, that, that's the one way, in particular in the Tokyo area of the Osaka, very densely populated area. And then another issue we, we must uh, aware of is the, um, the people is the living along the river embankment. So in order to improve like, the height of the embankment, often you have a set Settlement causing the houses as well. So we need to uh, cut off the settlement effect onto the existing. This is another th things we do need to consider. <coughs> okay. Can you 
was stationary safety fit. We need to develop it. <coughs> when did GNS concept of image develop in Japan? First? GNS? Yeah. Myself. When was that? <laughs> in which year? Um, as I mentioned, as you mentioned earlier, we had a, the huge the earthquake 2011, 2011, <coughs> and then the one year after, I started developing that system, and then we asked the many uh, other researchers interested in this region. We had a, a quite a, a, a few people is concerned that that kind of development is important, and then one of the, uh, the um, local government is interested and in join the discussion with us. So that maybe so that more uh, the actual implementation implementation will be possible in a few years time. Okay. Yeah. So uh, as I mentioned, the database is very important. Unless you have a database, proper database, and then updated the data, you cannot improve the uh, the index. Index is, is, is has to be used. The has to be used. Uh, has to use the uh, updated data. Any insurance or related commercial purpose? Are they using GMS? Um, maybe uh, I, I saturated some of the uh, the fund for that. Yeah. That would include the list of the uh, the um, database we use, one of which is the uh, insurance. Yes. which is related to the freedom of the residents, which is one of the fundamental human rights. So it's very difficult to relocate. But the, some of the law related to the disaster, the local government identified the area which we cannot do. So that's in order to do this. And also that the local government improve the height of the people the living space, in particular against the, uh, the tsunami. Um, the Tohoku area, the, the huge embankment, people were uh, living very close to the uh, um, coastal area, used to be, but they moved up to the upper area to be more. So that's the local government that can impose, impose that on the restrictions. Um, the, the similar thing is, is, is applied to the landslide as well. We have the uh, uh, hazard map where you cannot live on. And then the local government buy that land, piece of land, and they relocate the people. Yes. One question about the his presentation. <laughs> 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 I may ask now, Dr. from your side, now you said the aging of the workers is a problem in Japan when you talk to civil engineers. 
what is the main reason why you have gone for various unmanned uh, uh, machineries so that uh, you need not to have any more skilled labor to operate these uh, machines. So is it a sort of a remedial action that you have taken or is it going to be the trend in the entire world? I think uh, there are several, several reasons. One of the reasons is the population of Japan itself is uh, decreasing, the first one. Also, the other one is uh, uh, the construction industry is not attractive uh, for uh, most Japan young people. So we are now trying to attract young people, even from the uh, primary school. Well, as for our research institute, we, will, we, we invite very many uh, primary school students to our research institute to show how uh, we are uh, contributing to our society. Then we are trying to increase the number of young engineers. Also, another uh, solution will be uh, we should invite many foreign engineers, foreign young engineers to our industries, because there are so many excellent engineers all over the world. But this is because there are some language problems. We, we, we have not yet uh, invited uh, many foreign engineers to Japan, but we have to change to this station, is my answer. <coughs> Do you have a okay. Okay, now time for the present the token my appreciation to the today's speakers. There are my colleague in my uh, Dr. Anand Ramasinghe to present the token appreciation to today's speakers. First, I invite Professor Osamu Professor Osamu Kusatabe. Today's second speaker, Dr. Kenichi Horikashi. So, I would like to thank both the speakers. You spent your valuable time with us today's evening. So, I would like to ISL staff, especially Professor Niranjani Ratnayaka, who has supported us to bring this occasion, and also technical staff, then Neela Besekara, CEO, and the today's participant. Without your participation, this occasion would not be successful. Thank you all. Mm -hmm.